Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in this video, we will see how to use OPAM as an integrator. Now in the earlier videos of OPAM, we have seen that how to use OPAM as a summing amplifier and differential amplifier. And in these configurations, so far we have used resistors with this OPAM. So now suppose if we use reactive element like inductor or capacitor along with this OPAM, then we can use this OPAM as an integrator or differentiator. So in this video, we will see how to use this op-amp as an integrator by using the resistors and capacitors along with this op-amp. So first of all, just look at this inverting op-amp configuration. And in this configuration, the feedback resistor RF is connected between the output terminal and the inverting input terminal. So now suppose if we replace this feedback resistor by capacitor, then the same circuit can be used as an integrator. So let us understand how this circuit will act as an integrator. So in this circuit, let us assume that the current that is entering into this resistor R is let's say I in and the current that is going out of this node is let's say current IC that is the current which is flowing through this capacitor C and as this capacitor is connected in the feedback. So let us say this capacitor as CF. So now here because of the feedback, this node will act as a virtual ground. So at this node, the potential will be equal to zero. So let us apply the KCL at this node. So if we apply the KCL, then we can write it as a I in that is equal to the IC, which is the current that is flowing through this capacitor CF. Now this current I in will be equal to V in minus zero divided by this resistor R and that will be equal to this current IC. Now, if you know about the capacitor current, then the capacitor current IC can be given by the expression C times dVC by dt, where VC is the voltage across this capacitor. Now, we have already seen this expression in the earlier video of a transient analysis, right? But if you don't know about it, then let us quickly go through it. So the charge across the capacitor can be given by the expression C times the voltage across the capacitor. So if you take the derivative of this expression, then we will get rate of change of charge that is equal to the current will be equal to C times dVC by dt. And here we are assuming that the capacitance is not changing with the time. So in this way, we got this expression. So now let us use this expression and put this value in this expression. So if you put this value, then we will get V in divided by R that is equal to CF times dVC by dt where we see the voltage across this capacitor. So we can write this expression as CF times D by DT into zero minus V out, which will come out as V in divided by R that is equal to minus CF times D by DT into output voltage. So if we rearrange this expression, then we can write it as a DV out by DT that is equal to minus one divided by RCF into input voltage V in. And if we take the integration at both sides, then we will get the output voltage as V out that is equal to minus one divided by RCF times integration of input voltage. And here we are assuming that we have a no output voltage at this terminal before we have started the integration. Suppose we have an initial voltage at this terminal before the integration, then we can have one more term that is equal to V out zero plus that is the initial output voltage before we have started the integration. So this is the expression of the output voltage in terms of the input voltage. So as you can see here, the output voltage is the integration of the input voltage. And here this term RCF represents the integration time of this integrator. So using this circuit, we can integrate any input signal. So suppose if you apply a one volt of DC signal at the input, then at the output, you will get this signal. So as you can see, initially the output voltage will increase in a negative direction and at certain point, the output voltage will get saturated because the output voltage cannot go beyond the saturation voltage, right? Now here, the rate at which this output voltage reaches the saturation point depends upon the value of this R and the feedback capacitor CF. So by changing the value of this R and CF, we can change the slope of this output signal. Similarly, if we apply the sinusoidal signal at the input that is sine omega t, then at the output, you will get a cosine signal that is cos omega t. And likewise, 
if you apply the square wave at the input then at the output you will get a triangular wave now here the amplitude of the output signal depends upon the value of r and cf and that will be get clear to you when we will take few examples based on this integrator circuit so now so far we have seen this simple integrator circuit and we understood that using this circuit we can integrate any input signal but in the real life if you use this integrator then you may not get the desired output which you should get using the theoretical calculations so let us understand the limitations of this simple integrator circuit and let us also see how we can overcome this limitations so to understand that let us write the output voltage in terms of the impedance of this capacitor and the resistor so now we know that the reactance of this capacitor can be given by the expression 1 divided by omega c right which is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times fc so we can write the output voltage v out as minus xc divided by r times the input voltage v in or we can say that the gain of this op amp will be equal to minus xc divided by r that is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times rc into f so from this expression you can see that at 0 hertz or at very low frequencies the gain of the op amp will be very high and ideally it will be equal to infinite but practically the gain of the op amp will be limited by the open loop gain of the op amp so at 0 hertz the gain of the op amp will be equal to the open loop gain of the op amp because at 0 hertz or at dc level this capacitor will act as a open circuit and because of that the input voltage will be get amplified by the open loop gain of the op amp so output will always be get saturated and as the frequency increases the reactance of this capacitor will reduce and because of that the output voltage will also reduce so if you see the frequency response of this simple integrator then it will look like this so at 0 hertz or at dc level the gain of this integrator will be equal to the open loop gain of this op amp and this open loop gain used to be in the range of 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 6 so in decibel we can say that it is equal to 100 db and as the frequency increases the gain will reduce now suppose if you are using this op amp at let's say this frequency then you should not face the problem of very high gain of this integrator but even if you use the op amp at this frequency then also it is quite possible that your output will be get either distorted or saturated now the reason for this saturation or distortion is the input offset voltage of the op amp because in the real life scenario the op amps which we are using are not ideal op amps and every practical op amp has some sort of input offset voltage so even though this input offset voltage is of few millivolts but still it can saturate the output of this op amp so let's say few millivolts of input offset voltage is present at this terminal so this input offset voltage will be get integrated by this capacitor and eventually the output of this op amp will go towards the saturation so in this way even though you are operating at higher frequency but because of this input offset voltage it is quite possible that your output will be get saturated so we can avoid this problem by introducing a one more resistor in the feedback in parallel with this capacitor so in this way by introducing a one more resistor in parallel with this capacitor we can avoid the problem of saturation of the output voltage because now if you see at low frequencies this capacitor will act as a open circuit so at dc voltage or at low frequencies the gain which is being seen by this op amp will be equal to minus rf divided by r1 so even though few millivolts of input offset voltage is present at the input terminal it will only get multiplied by this factor so in this way we can avoid the problem of saturation so if you see any practical integrator you will find this feedback resistor in parallel with this capacitor so moreover that if you see any practical integrator you will also find a resistor which is being connected at the non inverting terminal so basically this resistor is connected to avoid the effect of input bias currents so we will see more about this input offset voltage and the input bias currents in a separate video so now because of this feedback resistor rf if you see the frequency response of any practical integrator then it will look like this so as you can see here at low frequencies the gain which is being seen by the op amp will be equal to constant and that is equal to rf divided by r1 and as we go beyond certain frequencies then you will see the reduction in the output 
and if you see the response of this integrator it is very similar to the response of a low pass filter and in fact it will act as a low pass filter so let us say here the 3 db frequency or the cutoff frequency of this integrator is fl so now if you apply a any input signal which is having a frequency lesser than this cutoff frequency fl then the opm will act as a inverting opm and it will provide the constant gain of minus rf tr by r1 so to use this opm as a integrator the input signal should have a frequency larger than this cutoff frequency fl and this cutoff frequency fl can be given by the expression 1 dr by 2 pi times this feedback resistor rf into cf so as you go beyond this cut off frequency fl you will see the reduction in the output voltage and at one particular frequency the gain of this integrator will be equal to 0 db so let us say this frequency is a 0 db frequency or let's say f0 so this f0 can be represented as 1 dr by 2 pi times r into cf so for the proper integration of input signal the input frequency should be larger than this cutoff frequency fl and for the proper integration this signal frequency fs should be at least 10 times this cutoff frequency fl so to integrate any input signal properly the input signal frequency should be in between this cutoff frequency fl and 0 db frequency f0 well practically you can also go beyond this 0 db frequency but if you go below this 0 db frequency then you will see the attenuation in the output signal so for the proper integration of any input signal it should lie between this cutoff frequency fl and f0 so now let us take some example based on this integrator so that the concept will be get clear to you so here we have a practical integrator circuit and in this circuit we have been asked to find the low frequency limit for this integration so here the value of this feedback capacitor is 10 nanofarade and the value of this feedback resistor is 100k while the value of this resistor r is 1 kilo ohm so we know that the expression of this cutoff frequency fl is equal to 1 dr by 2 pi times rf into cf so if we put the value of this rf and cf then the value of this cutoff frequency fl will come out as 159 hertz so for the proper integration of input signal your input signal frequency should be larger than this cutoff frequency fl and for proper integration it should be at least 10 times this cutoff frequency fl so in this way based on your input signal range you can design your integrator so now let us see the second example so in this example the circuit is the same circuit which we have seen in the last example but here the input signal now is a sinusoidal signal and if you see here the frequency of the input signal is 5 kilohertz now we have already seen that the cutoff frequency of this integrator is 159 hertz and for proper integration the signal frequency should be at least 10 times this cutoff frequency which comes out as 1.59 kilohertz now here if you see the input frequency it is 5 kilohertz so this signal will be properly get integrated so let us find the expression for the output voltage so we know that the output voltage v out can be given by the expression minus 1 dr by rcf multiplied by the integration v in dt now here the value of r is 1 kilo ohm and the value of cf is 10 nanofarade so let us put all the values into this expression so now if you put all these values and integrate this signal then you will get 10 to the power 5 dr by 2 pi times this 5000 multiplied by cos into 2 pi times 5000 t so if you simplify it then you will get 3.18 times cos of 2 pi into 5000 t so this will be the output voltage v out after the integration so as you can see here the amplitude of the output voltage depends upon the value of r cf and the input signal frequency so now let us see one more example based on this integrator circuit so in this example the circuit is same but now the input signal has been changed from the sinusoidal signal to the square wave and we need to find the output voltage at this end now we know that whenever we apply any square wave to the integrator the output voltage will be equal to triangular wave 
but let us find the amplitude of this triangular wave and let us also see whether this signal fulfills the criteria of our integration so if you see here the time period of this square wave is equal to 100 microsecond so in frequency if you say the frequency is equal to 10 kilohertz now for this circuit we have already seen that the cutoff frequency fl is 159 hertz and here the signal frequency is way beyond this cutoff frequency so it is ensured that the input signal will be properly get integrated so now let us find the amplitude of this integrated signal so to find the output voltage let us divide this square wave into the different segments so you can say that for 0 to 50 microsecond our input signal is 2 volt while from 50 to 100 microsecond our input signal is minus 2 volt so we can integrate individual segments and later on we can add the individual responses so for the first segment our output voltage vo1 will be equal to minus 1 divided by r times cf integration v1t dt which will be equal to minus 10 to the power 5 integration 0 to 50 microsecond 2 into dt so that will be equal to minus 10 to the power 5 into 50 microsecond into 2 so if you simplify it then you will get the output voltage as minus 10 volt so we can say that for 0 to 50 microsecond the voltage swing is minus 10 volt or we can say that the output signal is going from 5 volt to the minus 5 volt similarly if we integrate this particular segment then we will get the same 10 volt voltage swing but in a opposite direction so in this way if you see the output the output will vary from 5 volt to the minus 5 volt and as the input signal frequency is far beyond the cutoff frequency you will see the proper integration of the input signal so before i end up this video here is the last example for your exercise so this is the circuit of integrator and to this circuit we have applied this input signal so you need to find the integrated output signal so let me just give you the hint about the shape of the output waveform so as you can see here we are applying the input for a 1 millisecond so for this particular 1 millisecond you will see the output will look like this and from 1 millisecond to 4 millisecond as there is a no input so the output will remain as it is and once again from 4 millisecond to 5 millisecond as we are applying the input you will see the output will look like this so if you see the output waveform the output waveform will look like this but just calculate the value of this output voltage and do let me know that value in the comment section below so i hope in this video you understood how to design the integrator using the opam so if you have any question or suggestion do let me know in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos